truck 32. Something that I really enjoy doing. I just love to help other people. The thing that I enjoy doing the most is fire prevention. Uh, you get out to work with the public, you're representing the fire department, and you're teaching the public fire prevention, and uh, you get a lot of satisfaction out of that, and there's a lot of enjoyment in that. We honestly believe that even though we're volunteers, we take this job as like as we're professionals. Anything that anybody considers an emergency, they generally dial 223-0066 and get us and tell us what their problem is, and then we take care of it the best way we can. Ambulance calls, house fires, brush fires, you just about name it, and they call us for it. Birds and chimneys and cats up trees and well, the problems you might have. Uh, it's our job to protect the community from fire. We have a responsibility. You know, if nobody shows up for the... Kiwanis meeting, there's no great loss, but if there's a fire and nobody shows up, the town could be in big trouble. They tell us that uh, there's no place in the world that protects so many people for free as here in the firemen here in Nassau County. Most of the places throughout the world are, are paid, and like here in Baldwin, with 22, 24,000 people, right, 1,300 rescue calls and things like that, and we do it all for nothing. We're here tonight to discuss the pump panel on this fire truck. You figure the average fireman, maybe two, three hours a week spent on training. In the hydrant, we only have about 40 to 60 pounds. So when we connect up to the hydrant, we want to boost that up. Our nozzles have to operate at approximately 100, 125 pounds at the tip. We pick up the mask, shaking out to make sure that everything's out. Look behind you because you never know if the chief's back there or not. Swing it over your shoulder. Make sure it lands properly. You think of the tank, right? The coat, the helmet, the boots. They estimate it's about 82 pounds worth of weight if you're carrying a tool, like an axe or a halligan. The uh, experts tell us that we're carrying 82 pounds additional weight every time we go into the farm. You're ready to go. Any questions? It takes a very special kind of a wife to be able to accept the fire service. They have to be able to share their husband with something. At least you know where they are most of the times. They're down at the firehouse, and I guess that's a more preferable place to have them is down polishing the truck and doing other things than to wonder where he's at. Uh, fire service can take as much time as you let it have. You can have it have an hour a day, or you can let it have 24 hours a day, whatever you want to put into it. And unless you have a wife that is... Uh, willing to let you devote whatever time you want to the fire service. You can't belong to the fire service. It has to be a partnership between the husband and wife. It makes a difference whether you're married or single. Steve has uh, an edge where he doesn't have to go home and have somebody beat on his head every once in a while and say, how come you never come home? Or, you know, where are you going? It's dinner time and the whistle's blowing and you go tearing off. I think it was a lot harder in the beginning than now. Now it, he's out more now, but it doesn't seem to bother me as much. All right, the reason we're here this evening is to meet the requirements for the Girl Scout Merit Badge in Fire Prevention. Now, this is probably one of the most important merit badges that you'll ever go for, and the reason for this is fire prevention affects our lives every day in one way or another. Now, a lot of people don't think about fires. They try and put it out of their mind because everybody makes believe it's never going to happen to them. Your house is never going to catch on fire, and my house is never going to catch on fire. It's always going to be the fella next door or down the street. It can never happen to your house. Baldwin Fire Department, 1121. Yes, ma'am, what's your address? Okay, what's your phone number? All right, I'll be right there. Our Fire Prevention Bureau is been judged to be one of the best ones in the United States. And uh, our programs encompass every level of our community from nursery schools right up to senior citizens. K-84864-5 and footage 200 on the air with a signal aid at 619 Harvard Avenue, nearest intersection, Pine Street. Street, map location L25. We feel that every time we respond to a fire, we've lost another battle.
get tuned into it. Like at night, if there's a district, which is a brush fire, I don't even hear it. But if it's a working fire, I wake right up and I listen to the whole thing. Because, you know, you wait to hear if the ambulance is going to go to the hospital to see who's hurt. Um, I think every wife does that. Do you worry about it when you go out? No, I don't think any fireman worries about it. You couldn't. If you did, you would never go out. It's just quite as simple as that. around and watch the big fires and it's just exciting to me it's exciting to go into a fire and, and put it out even if you do take a beating it's it's all part of it every time the bell rings I get very excited and all I can think of is getting there and I do tend to hurry you gonna grow at it uh, I don't know I hope not because that's all the what it's all about it's all the excitement this is pop cotton he's been in the company for how many years you been in pop 37 years 37 years Ten years, if all the young guys did as much as him, we wouldn't need half of the young guys. <laughs> in the fire service or in the volunteer fire department, there were no generations gaps. We all worked together as uh, just one team, and it's not uh, you know the guys that are in their forties don't understand the guys in their twenties, and uh, vice versa. We all work together very nicely. The older guys teach the younger guys what they know, and uh, the older members pick up uh, some of their enthusiasm and vim and vigor from the younger guys so we all blend into just one big team especially when there's a fire then everybody works together you know, outstandingly when there isn't a call there's a great deal of uh, horsing around and locker room atmosphere and we break each other's chops unmercifully sometimes but it's uh, all more or less good natures and it has a lot to do with as jimmy likes to say our camaraderie around here and the spirit to core host three has a great deal of it and anybody that's in any fire company that doesn't think they're in the best company in the world, you know, they shouldn't be in the fire department of that company because if you're not in the best company in the fire department, it must be part of your fault that you're not. So, you know, you should move along and let somebody else try and make that the best company. We're doing a hose test. Once a year we test all the hose on the truck at various pressures for various length of times and we remove all defective lengths. That's so that when we get to a fire we don't have any hose burst. Or it's very rare that it happens anyway. could be inside the fire if the hose breaks at that time they could be in big trouble so we try and re weed out all the bad hose all the time so we have as little chance as possible of having a defective hose on the truck what they're going to do once they get this all laid out they're going to hook the pump into the hydrant and they're going to pressure test this hose and with any luck at all we get all wet every couple of net leaks we try and close up so that we can maintain the pressure in all the hoses this way it'll be a lot easier to finish. This, uh, this one in there. No, that's off the uh, couple. Still want to get that one down there? As happened to be, I think when you get to be 21, uh, if you're so inclined, you all of a sudden wake up one morning and you're in the fire department. I when I was born, my father was in the fire department, and when Keith was born, I was in the fire department. So when you grow up with it all your life, it just becomes a part of your normal, you know, daily routine almost. And uh, 